Okay, we shall begin. Uh, today's topic is Modbus redundancy systems. During today's webinar, we'll go over the following topics. Modbus redundancy systems, Modbus redundancy I.O. applications, Modbus TCP redundancy I.O. equipment, and finally setting up Modbus I.O. redundancy. ICPDOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan. Um, ICPDOS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. Our company is ISO 9001, and we are Rojas compliant, which means our products are lead free. We're also a Microsoft embedded partner, uh, and our products are uh, meet statutory and regulatory requirements. Redundant systems. Redundancy in engineering systems is about providing reliability and a process alternative to a failing condition. Redundancy helps to ensure business continuity and production. Our redundancy in industrial control systems is critical for the safety of equipment, employees, and even the public. Uh, instrumentation and control engineers need to balance the cost of redundant PLCs with the consequences of an outage and of production and safety. <clears throat> Continuous processes, including food, food processing, assembly lines, and chlorine-based pulp and paper manufacturing all require synchronization of numerous stages. A stoppage in one section may lead to a bottleneck in others and loss of unfinished product throughout the assembly line and uh, loss of money. Batch processing. Uh, surface mount technology circuit boards is a good example where a large number of products is processed all at once. PLCs with redundancy help ensure that the line will be operational when order is output when order output is started again. So therefore no lost products and the PLC keeps control and keeps manufacturing running. Uh, with critical industries like mining, nuclear, and gas controls, can, they cannot afford interruption in operation and safety monitoring. A near 100% uptime of the control system and safety system with full backup capabilities is required to prevent uh, catastrophic failures or catastrophes in general. Uh, there are three types of uh, redundancy that we'll go over for now. Um, cold redundancy is for non-critical processes where time is not a high priority and human intervention is acceptable. As an example, if a press machine fails, the automation system should notify the operator and issue an alarm. A simple response may be to cut the power to the power supply and display a red alarm light. The operator can resume operation by simply starting another unit and requesting service for the failing unit. In warm redundancy, when time and response to a failure is more important but not critical, a warm redundancy strategy may suffice if a temporary outage is acceptable. As an example, if a valve fails uh, during operation on a fluid transfer system, the pump can be disabled and the system shut down. Depending on the process, the product may have a finite period in which it will not be damaged, contaminated, or start to deteriorate. The cycle can tolerate a few seconds of interruption, but the process may be restored quickly and automatically to avoid any integrity issues. Uh, during hot redundancy, similar to warm redundancy in structure, but hot redundancy offers an instant process correction when a failure is detected. For example, in a mining or ore operation, if a primary controller for a conveyor fails, a backup one should immediately assume control to avoid any delays in the transfer. 
engineers need to identify the parts of the automation system that are most critical and do have the possibility of failure. If the expectation is problems with communication, there will be redundant communication systems. If the control flow is critical, they may opt for redundant controllers. The final part is the field device with IO redundancy. An automation system can have none or any combination of redundancy depending on the critical components. Uh, the picture shown here shows all type. At the top we have uh, redundant controllers or operator interfaces uh, by redund connected by a redundant communication line using uh, ICP-DOS uh, NS205 or you can simply put in also uh, ring switches which will provide a redundant path. Um, our IDCS system includes redundant power supplies and the ability to use redundant controls. Um, let's see, if you have redundant field devices, you can use our IDCS remote I.O. modules shown as IDCS 8830 in the picture, where you have, you can have a redundant I.O. or you can, uh, where you have two of each inputs connected or input modules connected to the same controller. Or you can have separate uh, controllers where you just have one I.O. channel or one I.O. slot module. A redundancy in networks. The real-time redundant ring switch offers fault tolerance for a ring uh, network topology. It detects and recovers a fiber or copper or RS40 or I'm sorry, RJ45, a link failure within 300 milliseconds. Uh, the picture shown here is an example of our ring switches, where if any one switch fails, it'll have a backup path which it can. Uh, revert to if uh, communication is lost. Uh, with controller redundancy, uh, two PLCs are used and the inputs are split between both processors 50-50. If one PLC fails, only half of the capacity is lost instead of the entire load. Um, let's see, the preferred method though is shadow mode where there's two identical PLCs are running the same software in the same I.O. One operates as the primary, the second as a secondary or backup. If, a heart, if the heartbeat signal between the first and second controller is not re received uh, periodically, in this case one second, uh, the backup unit assumes control of the automation system providing uninterrupted operation. So again, the main PLC is always in control. And then if communication is lost or if I.O. stops uh, being received, the I.O. statuses rather, the second PLC will detect that and switch to be the main PLC and most likely issue an alarm. Our redundancy and controllers. Uh, let's see, this slide shows our WinPack, uh, in this case, uh, 8047 series with redundant I.O. and Ethernet I.O. Um, at the top we have two PCs uh, connected by an Ether switch to both uh, wind packs uh, connected by Ethernet and then connecting at the bottom to expansion I.O. racks. And this provides several layers of redundancy including the top layer which is the two PCs, uh, the two Ethernet switches which uh, provide redundant communication and finally at the bottom uh, where there's uh, multiple connections to the same I.O. Uh, with the expansion racks. Um, in this uh, picture it shows a close-up of our RD IDCS remote I.O. system uh, where it has redundant power modules, uh, the ability to add up to eight I.O. slot modules. Uh, you can either have uh, pairs where they're the same I.O. type and you have multiple connections to the same uh, sensors and end devices to provide I.O. redundancy or you can have one of each type of module and not have I.O. redundancy and still have a redundant power and redundant communication. Uh, this slide shows our redundant I.O. 
Um, let's see. Uh, the top shows the master and the slave uh, slot modules, and then they're both connected to our DN boards. The DN boards provide uh, dual access to the same I.O. points, so you will have I.O. redundancy in this case for both the master and slave devices. On the IDCS uh, slot I.O. modules are listed here. Uh, note that uh, we have these, plus we're coming out with many, many more shortly. Uh, let's see, we have everything from digital I.O. for DI and DO, and for analog types we have AI, RTD, temperature, or I'm sorry, thermocouple, analog inputs and analog outputs, and we have a heart uh, communication board and pulse and frequency counters. Um, the digital modules and all uh, DCS modules have these features. We have both single and redundant uh, communication settings where, again, you can have either one module uh, on the rack system or you can have two, one acting as a redundancy for the first one. And the LED statuses will show the status of the I.O. And the termination boards are removable and uh, provide the relay outputs and are EMS protected. And they also have uh, individual LED indicators for each channel. Uh, the analog modules, uh, again, offer single and redundant options. Uh, they're high accuracy, and some also have heart communication. Uh, let's see, the termination boards are cost-effective and connected uh, using a, a DB cable to uh, the I.O. slot module. Uh, we have for temperature and pulse modules, uh, here's a few examples, the F8016 and F8015 and F8084, which is our uh, pulse module, and the corresponding daughter boards are shown at the bottom. Uh, for cabling and termination, uh, this example shows uh, how everything is interconnected to the slot I.O. modules. Uh, wiring can be very complex, as shown at the top. If you had just, I guess, terminal blocks at the top where everything is connected, our system incorporates uh, using DB cables where it's uh, much neater and you wire everything, uh, all your sensors to the daughter boards for one-time wiring and easy maintenance. <coughs> Uh, the IDCS utility is shown here. It shows the module status, uh, provides the I.O. list, uh, configuration for, as an example, the thermocouple modules where you select the thermocouple type, and the I.O. channel view uh, shown at the bottom where it shows you uh, each I.O. channel type. And there's different tabs for the various types of I.O. You can monitor the status of each I.O. in this utility. And let's see, these modules uh, do offer a hot swappable uh, ability so that if a module fails during production, you can simply pull the module out without restarting the controller and put in a new one, uh, reconnect the cable, and the uh, DCS system will be picked up and the module will pick up the configuration of the previous uh, module. So production time is uh, cut down. Uh, this is an example of the hot swap um, ability. Uh, using it, the stop command and the auto sync uh, are incorporated in the auto configuration. So that when you do not need to stop the controller from uh, running to uh, be able to swap the modules. So you simply slide out the module reconnect the cable, put in the new module. Uh, the controller will recognize that it's a new module. Uh, it'll auto-configure the module and then auto-sync to catch up in the I.O. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, see now would be uh, the time to ask. Uh, we, if you have any questions afterwards, our contact information is shown below. You can simply email us or visit our website, and we also offer online chat. Uh, does anyone have any questions?
Okay. If no one has any questions, uh, thank you for attending our webinar, our last one for the year. Um, let's see. Hopefully, you all have a happy holidays, and uh, we'll t we'll talk to you and hopefully hear from you in the uh, new year. And uh, please uh, continue to look at our website and newsletter for announcements for our January and February webinars. Thank you.